Now, this slide, capitalist globalization. This is the context that we live today. Colonial modernization destroyed the mainstream traditional systems of knowledge in the country. Uh, I hope you have already understood the overall <coughs> context. Local knowledge of the communities on the one side, and then textualized national level traditional knowledge. Colonial modernity destroyed that. Like Ayurveda or any such major textualized area of knowledge. Uh, that was subordinated by colonial modernity and it was considered unscientific and so on. Uh, with the result, there was massive destruction of the traditional system of knowledge. Modern knowledge meant scientific knowledge and it marginalized the traditional knowledge as unscientific. Nonetheless, modernity also encouraged translation and publication of traditional knowledge texts as part of antiquarian interest. That is also there. We have to be thankful to the colonial missionaries, for example, who studied various texts. They translated them and made available uh, to the scholarly world. And people had already lost knowledge in the language in which these texts are written, for example, Sanskrit. Many Indians were not able to understand uh, the original text. But uh, the missionaries who came here worked hard and they learned it from the pundits. They contacted a lot of Brahmin pundits and then uh, transferred knowledge to a larger audience. That is uh, also to be recognized. Modernity in the initial stage did not destroy much of local knowledge or community knowledge. That formed part of oral tradition. Modernity did not intervene them because their life was not immediately modernized. They were more or less in their traditional habitat and sustenance of traditional knowledge was possible. As modernization advanced in the form of development, it involved a large scale destruction of ethnic or tribal knowledge. I mentioned about the disastrous process. Now traditional knowledge. Traditional knowledge about India, we have to remember these features. Traditional knowledge has two streams. One, the dominant traditional knowledge of the written tradition and B, the local knowledge of the oral tradition. Dominant traditional knowledge is stored in Sanskrit texts and commentaries. It is systematized and standardized and uh, theoretical knowledge. Local knowledge is non-systematized compendium of practices and hence a knowledge practice combined. Theorized the dominant knowledge, Marki, had regional adaptations called the Desi. Remember this situation, it's a little complex. Each community had its own knowledge and all over the subcontinent you have therefore multiple forms of knowledge, multiple systems of knowledge. Now using uh, some of these forms of knowledge, uh, major traditional <coughs> knowledge had emerged through the process of standardization, integration and so on. And you have what is called the national traditional knowledge of India, traditional Indian wisdom. Traditional Indian wisdom integrated the uh, local systems of knowledge uh, and theorized them in the form of taxons like Samhitas, uh, Bhashyas, Akhyanas, Vyakhyanas, and uh, uh, you know such texts. So they are all textualized. But textualized knowledge, theoretical knowledge also got disseminated to the localities through practices. And you have therefore Desi versions of the Margi tradition. Margi Desi tradition. In English it is called the greater and little traditions. Greater tradition is Margi and little tradition is Desi. Bharatanatya is just a a form of dance evolved out of Nati Shastra. The Nati Shastra is the Margi variety and on the basis of that you have different dance forms all over the country. There, there may be Kathak in one place, Odissi in another place, uh, Bharatanatyam in one place, Kuchupri in one place, uh, Mohiniyatam in another place and so on. So these are all Desi versions of Desi variants of 
Margi Macro. Now, constitution of traditional knowledge, the main strategy of knowledge production in traditional <laughs> India was individualistic meditative enterprise, tapas. Tapa is heat and the deeper concentration. That's what tapas actually means. But we have a mystified understanding of tapas, maharshis and tapas and so on. It's a metaphorical way of talking about the same cognitive realization. If you get heated up and then concentrate in such extreme level and then finally you come out with some kind of realization, this is enlightenment. But we have a, a different kind of um, emotional understanding about the whole process. The result of which is improved upon through dialectics, tarka, expanded through hermeneutics, Mimamsa, carried forward through interpretation, Vyakya, commentary, Bhashya, as well as compilation, Samhita, and integration through analytical comprehension called the Sangra. So these are taxons. So knowledge production in traditional India has to be understood in, in this sense at the Margi level, at the macro level. Multiple forms of knowledge got preserved as part of orality during all periods, but all of them never had equal acceptance for the properties uh, of authority, authenticity and credibility were neither ontological nor epistemological, but ideological as determined by the social system of power relations. <coughs> I don't want to go into details because immediately they may not be relevant to you uh, as your question uh, at the moment is uh, about uh, local knowledge recording and transmitting that. But anybody who is researching in traditional knowledge will have to know about what I mean by the process. The process of domination of local, and domination over, lo over local knowledge and also the process of incorporation, assimilation, subordination and even destruction of certain local forms of knowledge. There was always a process of absorption and extraction of knowledge from the local observances and practices, that is, the local knowledge practice combined of the lower strata. Charaka and Sushruta in their Samhitas acknowledged as to how they constituted Ayurvedic knowledge by learning and analyzing the knowledge practice combined of the people of the forest Ajavitas and the pasture Ajapas and Gopas. Problems of restoration and conservation. It's here that we have to uh, focus uh, on ICT uh, or this information technology on the one side and then the real problems. Local knowledge is local people's knowledge practice combined. Practice as such is not knowledge. Local uh, knowledge is practice knowledge combined, knowledge is embedded in the practice. So I started my lecture by referring to that. Restoration by way of ethnographic compilation of practices is only a preliminary exercise for the conservation of practices. You cannot conserve practices easily today. You have to know knowledge and then you will be able to record knowledge, preserve knowledge and then conserve it. Conservation of practices is very difficult for they do not have any functional context now in the present day society of modern science and technology. Now many people uh, tell you that we have this traditional knowledge and knowledge, but that may be distorted completely. But they are not using it, but they have understood uh, and they are clever enough to know that you are approaching them uh, for some kind of uh, thing with which they had uh, uh, do certain things at the ancestral times. Now their own practices they don't know. So their knowledge is distorted, their knowledge is incomplete. But still we go there and they uh, give you all kinds of hospitalities because they know that they will be rewarded. And also they know how to tailor uh, their responses to your questions how to suit them and so on. So they talk all kinds of stories and so on and you will very sincerely take note of the entire things and would write a PhD thesis on that. 
and, and a serious examiner would even uh, go to the extent of noting down all sorts of problems, but luckily there is one word in the English dictionary, however. So the examiner would then finally say, however, I strongly recommend this dissertation to be admitted to the award of degree of Doctor of Philosophy by the university. Uh, conservation practice practices uh, would be very difficult uh, for they do not have any functional context now in the present day society of modern science and technology. Modern technology can be quite helpful in the restoration of local knowledge. Although conservation of it in its actual conditions and context is difficult, preservation with original conditions and context animated is possible. So that, that is where technology will help. Computer technology can uh, help a lot through simulation. Uh, artificial generation of the lost context can be recreated. But for that you have to provide enough knowledge to the computer specialist. Computer specialist doesn't have anthropology of knowledge, historical understanding of knowledge. So it is your responsibility to study local knowledge anthropologically on the one side and also epistemologically on the other. And then the overall context has to be <coughs> transferred to the computer specialist. Then he or she will prepare a software which would be useful and then simulation will be possible. But it involves high computing. It's not the ordinary kind of computer. Uh, how scientists are using high computer, uh, high performance computer, uh, that has to be extended to humanities and social sciences with multiple software. At the moment, you have only empirical uh, data managed through uh, software, SPSS, for example. Uh, Various social science software would be available, but they are all relating to uh, information, uh, information overload and, and, and then management of the overload. And also, I have always this uh, opposition to the celebration of information. We are uh, called the age of information. But uh, you know, information is only a preliminary level of understanding. You have to go beyond that. Knowledge is generated out of the process of information. And then wisdom is still above that. If you are still in the age of information, then you are democratizing information, which means you are democratizing the preliminary level of understanding. It's just assemblage of empirical data alone wouldn't mean. If you give only that as the challenge to the computer specialist, computer specialist will help you in preparing empirically oriented maps, charts, and various sophisticated communicative objects to suit your purpose. But that is still at the elementary level of production of knowledge. Knowledge has to be produced through high computing facilities, for which you require sophisticated software which humanities and social sciences haven't been using as yet.